Hello students, welcome to this discussion on fuel cells. Now we shall we are looking at uh, alkaline fuel cell. So as discussed, fuel cells have the same components like anode, cathode and electrolyte, but the electrolyte only makes the difference and that is why we have got different classifications of fuel cells. So the uh, different types of fuel cells can be based on the uh, type of hydrogen and uh, type of oxygen being supplied. If it, is, it can be pure hydrogen, pure oxygen fuel cell, then it can be like a, a, a hydrogen rich gas and air fuel cell or ammonia air fuel cell. Because air has got 20% oxygen in that. Then you have got synthesis gas air fuel cell and lastly hydrocarbon gas and air fuel cell. So please look at this uh, alkaline fuel cell. Left you have got hydrogen coming in from the top <coughs> and going from the bottom. It is going as water and heat out. Okay. Then uh, right side you have got uh, oxygen coming in. And this hydrogen ele uh, electrons which are flowing from uh, this anode to the cathode they constitute the current you can see the electron is flowing from anode to cathode and thus electricity is produced and between these two anode and cathode you have got electrolyte uh, this is alkaline electrolyte here and uh, the reactions are very simple this anode reactions you can see uh, 2H2 plus 4OH this is uh, hydroxy ions results to 4H2O that is water plus 4 electrons ok so electrons are re released in anode from anode and in the cathode uh, reaction where the oxygen is supplied oxygen plus this water whatever is produced in the anode plus this electrons will give rise to hydroxy 4 hydroxy OH so ions so this way this is a self sustaining uh, uh, reaction so uh, from in, at the anode when we supply hydrogen it uh, generates uh, electrons as well as uh, water and uh, at the uh, cathode the oxygen is supplied continuously which uses uh, this this oxygen uh, reacts with this uh, water and electrons to produce hydroxy ions and hence the continuously uh, the electrons are produced at the anode and electricity is produced by each cell. <coughs> so the alkaline fuel cell uses alkaline electrolyte such as 40% aqueous potassium hydroxide QH. In alkaline fuel cells negative ions travel through the electrolyte to the anode where, where they combine with hydrogen to generate water and electrons. Alkaline fuel cells were the first of the fuel cell technologies developed and they were the first type widely used in the US space program to produce electrical energy and water on board spacecrafts. These fuel cells use a solution of potassium hydroxide in water as an electrolyte and can use a variety of non precious metals as catalyst at the anode and cathode. The high temperature uh, AFCs operate at temperatures between 100 to 250 degrees centigrade whereas most recent AFCs designed operate at lower temperature of around 23 to 70 degrees centigrade. AFCs are uh, high performance fuel cells due to the rate at which the chemical reactions takes place in the cell. They are also very efficient reaching efficiency of 60% in space application. IC engine has got only, only 35 to 40% uh, efficiency but uh, fuel cell can go up to 60% efficiency. But the, the problem is uh, the fuel cell, alkaline fuel cells can be poisoned by CO2. So the CO2 in the air can affect the cell operation and hence uh, we need to use pure quality of hydrogen and pure quality of oxygen in this fuel cell. The CO2 can combine uh, with KOH that electrolyte uh, 
potassium hydroxide to form potassium carbonate which will increase the resistance so that is not required co2 is not required here this purification process is costly susceptibility to uh, co2 poisoning also affects the cell's lifetime life of the cell further adding to the cost cost is less of a factor for remote locations uh, such as space or under the sea when we are working in space or in the sea you know, the cost is not important there the quality reliability reliability is the most important thing and life however to effectively compete in the most conventional commercial markets these fuel cells will have to become more cost effective see as of now why fuel cells are not uh, we don't find them in cars is because they are not cost effective they are very expensive uh, suppose i can give an example if you are traveling a bus from karwa to our college the 12 km to say you are paying 25 rupees by diesel bus if you have to travel by fuel cell bus then it will not cost 25 rupees it will cost you 100 rupees four times three to four times so that uh, that is why they are not being used for public transport as of now uh, this uh, alkaline fuel cells have sh been shown to maintain sufficiently stable operations for about 8000 operating hours so definitely they have got long life thousands of hours like 8000 hours uh, and uh, the research is going on to make them um, very economical and one uh, bottleneck what we have seen because of uh, co2 which is there in the air now air, air has got almost 400 ppm of uh, co2 so this will uh, react with the electrolyte that qh and form potassium carbonate and which will reduce the uh, which will increase the resistance and thus reduce the current Hence, they are not very popular, but research is going on on this. So, this was all about alkaline fuel cells.